We thank God for today and the grace to see this day strong as we are. The journey still continues and the grace of God is sufficient. We have a hashtag, grace is sufficient. Amen? Amen. We thank God indeed and let us expect from him. At this time, I would request us to have our seats as we welcome the servant of God, our provost, to bring the word of God to us. Welcome, Baba Provost. And as he comes, we thank God for Mom for joining us for today. Mom, we thank God for you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. That's better. I want to thank God tonight for the grace that is indeed sufficient and the grace that has kept me today and also allowed me to join you in this evening prayer fellowship as we hit our second day or we end our second day of prayer and fasting. And we are trusting God for the grace to finish the year much better than we began. We said that the ending of a matter is better than its beginning. And we are believing God that our ending this year will be an ending with a difference because God will release his unlimited grace and he will release it in a great way because he is faithful. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe there are those who have joined us and they were not with us yesterday. I know my wife is one of them. If you didn't, were not with us yesterday, you can raise up your hand. Asante sana, I see several hands. May God bless you for joining us tonight and may the Lord minister to you. We are not able because we have only one hour. We are not able to take you through what we did yesterday, but probably just to give you a highlight is to tell you that yesterday we looked at the place of grace the meaning of grace, because we need the grace of God this year. Even to finish this year, we will finish it by the grace of God. And we said that grace is God's uh, favor towards the unworthy. God's favor towards the unworthy and the undeserving. Those who are looked at as by the community and the community thinks they are unworthy, they are undeserving, but God in his divine mercies desires that to favor them. He desires to honor them with his favor. And even those who feel in themselves, and you could be here tonight feeling like you are unworthy, like you have not done the right things, like you do not stand a chance in the presence of God, grace is God embracing you and looking at you favorably. Praise the name of the Lord. So grace is not about us. Grace is a gift of God. It is not about us paying a cost. We are not praying and fasting so that we can earn grace. No, we are only praying and fasting as a step of faith and humility in the presence of God. But grace is a free gift that is given by God himself. Praise the name of the Lord. And we said many other things. We said that grace is greater than our sin. We do not have to suffer the guilt of sin all through our lives. We need to remember that grace is greater than our sin. And we say that God has given grace in a more abundant way. And even today the Lord was reminding me that grace in people has different levels. Yani, Mimi na wewe tuko na neema kiasi tofauti. There are people who are enjoying abundant grace. Yani mungu tu kwa neema na kibali chake, amewapa neema isiyo ya kawaida. Abundant grace. And you look at them and you just can be able to tell these people or this person is operating on a higher level of, of grace than me. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verses 14 that God had bestowed upon him grace abundantly. And that is my desire. I hope it is your desire. That God can move us from the level of grace we are in to experience the abundance of grace. If that is your faith, can you say a bigger amen? amen. 
that you will operate in the abundance of grace in your life. And I just want to believe God for that. And then we said, we looked at the benefits of grace. Number one, we said grace provides us unlimited access to God. The grace of God just opens, the favor of God opens entries for us. And we are able to access the presence of God or the throne of God by grace. And we quoted Hebrews 4 and verses 16. And then we said that grace also wins for us a new relationship, a revived relationship, an intimate relationship. Baada ya corona kutuweka nyumbani na kutufanya tukaukiwe that there is grace that can be able to renew our relationship with God and make that relationship to be intimate. Ya dani zaidi. That's the work of grace. It leads us to renewal. It leads us to an intimate relationship or fellowship with God. And we looked at Exodus 33, verses 17, when Moses was telling God, Do not send me by an angel. I want you to go with us. Your presence must go with us. And God, by His grace, renewed His commitment and, you know, relationship with the people of Israel. And He led them to the, to the land of promise. Then we looked at the third grace and we said that it is a grace that disciplines and trains us to live in a way that honors God. Even as we seek God to bless us, to uplift us, you know, to enlarge our territories and all these things, we need the grace of God that trains us to and disciplines us so that we do not live a careless life. Praise the name of the Lord. Sio kwa sababu kwamba neema iniku kuliko dhambi zetu basi tuseme ya kwamba we can live the way we want. No. We cannot take the grace of God for granted. Even though grace is greater than our sin, the grace of God also teaches us to say no to all ungodliness. It teaches us to say no to all the evil that is in this life and to desire to live a life that honors God. Praise the name of the Lord. I know the, the one meter and so whatever is keeping us far away. Can you ask your neighbor, are you living a life that honors God? Eh, ukiona jirani hakuogereshi, you can be sure there is a problem. Eh, ask again, are you living a life that honors God? Hallelujah. I am trying and praying every day that my life shall be a life that honors God, shall be a disciplined life. I will be trained by the Spirit of God. Titus chapter 2, 11 to 14. Trained by the Spirit of God, by the grace of God, to say no to all ungodliness and to be trained to live a righteous life. Praise the name of the Lord. Then we said finally the grace also grants us immeasurable, immeasurable, yani unlimited, it cannot be measured, immeasurable spiritual blessings. And we saw that in Ephesians 2 and verse 7. Immeasurable spiritual blessings. Yani baraka ambazo hazina mipaka, hazija pimwa. Na huyu mungu tunaye mwabudu, diya anapeana hizi baraka. He is the Lord and the God who releases immeasurable. Hey, hapo dipo tunahitaji kweda kama St. Stephen's Cathedral. We need to leave here neema ambayo imepimwa pimwa. Najua hiko kuna... Kuna neema ambayo imepimwa pimwa sana, eh? Imepimwa pimwa. Unaagalia your incomes, zimepimwa ni kama zinapimiwa pare kwa, kwa mita. Munajua mita ya maji, eh? Ni kama kuna mtu wamekaa hapo wana kuzimia, zinatoka ka drop. Na kuna wale unaangalia maishani, unaona wana neema ingine unashitua kwa ni mfereji ya pesa ilipasukia kwa They have unlimited access. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you tired na kupimiwa pimiwa? Oh, you do not look tired. We unaka umetosheka na hiyo. Eh? I'm telling God, lift us and lift us and raise us to that level of immeasurable spiritual blessings. Praise the name of the Lord. I am getting tired. I we said yesterday that if you do not get tired with your present situation, then transformation will not come. If you are comfortable with the things are the way things are in your life, then you are stuck there. Nimpaka uchoshwe na hiyo hali. Na usikia nitafunga na nitaomba 
nili ni muambie bwana nifungulie neema yako ambayo haipimwi immeasurable that is what we desire tonight praise the name of the lord niulizie jirani yenyewe itanga by the way hiyo ni kiruia ama ni lugha gani <laughs> oh my goodness tonight we have to take it a little bit further as we continue talking about grace maana tunatafuta neema ya kumalizia mwaka hata nimeruka zingine sitasema i just want to go straight to some what i feel the lord leading me to share tonight you know why we are asking for grace and i hope those fourth areas we mentioned hizo ambazo tulijifunza jana i hope you based your prayer the whole of today asking god for that grace asking god to pour down such graces in your life in your family in the labor of your hands and even in your in your church for example here at the cathedral and even in our nation use these prayer points to speak and to prophesy to your situations to the situations that are facing your family to the situations that are facing our cathedral and to the situations that are facing the nation i'm not coming here to you know to entertain you no i am giving you spiritual keys that we can use to speak and prophesy to the dry bones and they get alive praise the name of the lord mwambie mwenzako hapa si mchezo By the way si mchezo ati una tunasema umefunga na afu unaenda ukikura kura madazi of your view juu huonekani pole sana we are not here for that we are here on a serious business and i remember i wrote to some guys on a whatsapp group i hope they are here and i told them if you are comfortable or you are used to prayer and fasting do not join us for this journey this is not for those who are comfortable This is for people who are desiring change in their lives. People who are longing for God, longing for divine intervention. Praise the name of the Lord. Ya kwamba Mungu lazima uje. Tunapomaliza hizi siku 20 ambazo zimebakia, Jehovah tunahitaji kuona neema tu yako. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the spirit of these meetings. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Can we go to Psalm 44? Nasikia kama kuongea na saa zimeisha. Psalm 44. Psalm 44. Are you there? It has about 26 verses. I don't know how fast we can read all of them, but we will be able to do that in a very short while. Psalm 44. Are you there? Psalm 44. You can follow us if you are not yet there. I told you yesterday we're going to have a Jewish Psalm in Old Testament. Please go to the Old Testament. It is between Job and Proverbs Psalm 44 We have heard it and I want you to listen to this psalm very well Just listen to to what the psalmist is saying We have heard it with our ears O oh God Our ancestors have told our ancestors have told us what you did in their days in days long ago with your heart you drove out the nations and planted our ancestors you crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish it was not by their sword that they won the land nor did they did their arm bring victory it was your right hand your arm and the light of your face for you loved them that's a powerful testimony isn't it then verses 4 i want you to follow the argument verses 4 you are my king and my god who decrees victories for jacob through you we push back our enemies through your name we trample our foes i put no trust in my bow My sword does not bring me victory but you give us victory over our enemies you put our adversaries to shame in God we make our boast all day long and we praise your name forever very beautiful so far isn't it 
Then let's go to verses 9 and you hear the change of the story. But now, the word but indicates change. But now, the word now marks present, isn't it? Now. But now, you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy. And our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing from their sale. You have made us reproach. You have made us a reproach to our neighbors, the scorn and the reason of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The people shake their heads at us. I live in disgrace all day long. My face is covered with shame at the towns of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy who is bent on revenge. All these came upon us, though we, did not, we had not forgotten you. We had not been false, false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back. Our feet had not strayed from your path. But you crushed us and made us a hound for Jacobs. You covered us over the deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hearts to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it, since he knows the secrets of the hearts? Yet, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. Verses 23 to 26, hear the change again. Awake, Lord. Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget you, our misery and oppression? We are brought down to, da to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Rescue us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> 45 I minutes, mean, 26 verses. If you have followed the flow of the prayer of this person or the psalmist, verses 1 to 3, it is a testimony of the God of the past. Katika's his or three verses, he talks about the testimony of how God worked and did wonders for the nation of Israel in the past. Somebody say, in the past. And in those three verses, he says, God was the sole source, the only source of Israel's victories over her enemies. Ya kwamba nyakati zire za zamani, mungu peke yake, dia liye peana ukombozi, kwa taifa la Israeli, vidi ya madui wa. Mungu peke yake. Remember, he's talking about the past. Then anasema, it was not by their doing. It was only the, the shining of divine grace, the unmerited favor. And I want you to look at the verses 3. You know, some, some of these things we mentioned and you wonder where are they coming from. Verses 3, part B of it, it was your right heart, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. And the light of your face, that is the favor of God. It was just by divine favor, the unmerited favor towards them, that won them their battles and gave them victories. How akushidada kwa sababu ya we mawao? No. It was only that God looked at them favorably. Wapendwa, it was not that Israel was more better a nation than the other nations of the world. No. Sio kwa sababu walikuwa wautifu kushinda watu wengine. La. It was only because God looked graciously 
at them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why we need grace as we end the year. That is why we need God to look at us favorably. That is why we need God to shine his divine face upon us even as we end the year 2020. Because when he does so, victories come our way. I don't want to, to, to dwell so much on the God of the past. But I know there are people here who test, whose testimony is about the past. Kuna wakati mungu wali nitedea. Kuna wakati mungu wali kuwa muema. Kuna wakati mungu wali nijibu maombi yangu. There are people whose only testimony is about the past. And maybe you are here tonight. The Lord is speaking to you. That we need to move our faith from the past and bring it to the present. Praise the name of the Lord. In verses 4 to 8, verses 4 to 8, we hear a change of the tone. And the psalmist says, you are my king. Meaning he's talking about the present. And in verses 4 to 8, they make the ancestral faith. Wanachukua imani ila wali wambiwa na baba yao, kumhusu mungu, na wanafanya imani yao, imani hiyo ya babu zao, iwe yao sasa. They are owning the faith. And so in verses 4 to 8, they call God their king. They tell us how they depend on God from verses 5. And I say, Maya Kwamba, we, I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. So who you mwandishi and asema, sasa ni najua, ushidi wangu, unatokana na wewe. It is not by my might. It is not by my ability. So he's bringing the God of the ancestors to be the God of today. Praise the name of the Lord. Then he continues on and he says in verses 17 to 22, that's a very saddening verse, verses. Hatai gawa wamekua wema hivi from verses 9, 9 actually. They then express the present. Hey, and this is what I am calling the distressing present. Verses 9 to 22. Distressing present. Niliwabia jana lazima uchoshwe. Na you are present that is not going on very well. Usipo choshwa na you are present, then things will remain the way they are. These guys had a distressing present. From verses 9 wanasema, but now you have rejected and harbored us. Yani huyu mungu waliyefanya miujiza wakati wa babu zao. Huyu mungu wabaya aliyomkuwa amewapa victories in their present day. All of a sudden, he had rejected them. Alikuwa mewaondokea. Wakasikia wameondokewa na mungu. Mungu walipo nyamaza na kuwaondokea. What happened to them? The Bible says that they were humbled. Then what else happened? Mungu hakuenda nao vitani tena. He did not go with them to the battle. Verses 10, Kwa sababu mungu hayuko nao, wakafukuzwa na maadui zao. Adui ya kawa na uwezo juu yao. What continues happening, then anasema, maadui wakatunyanganya, they prodded us of the wealth and the blessings you had given us. Look at how things turn bad when God is not working for you, when the grace of God is not in your life. Maisha ikabadilika. And I know there are people here whose lives has changed drastically. Kuna wakati maisha yako yalikuwa mema. But tonight you are here and you are suffering. You are going through pain. The Lord is speaking to you through Psalm 44. And so watu hawa wakaishi maisha ambayo, they are given up. They are in pain. Things have turned unfair all of a sudden. Sio kwa sababu wame backslide, uh -uh, they have not backslidden. In actual fact from verses 17, I think, yes, to 22. Wana muambia mungu, we did not backslide. We did not forsake the covenant. We did not even worship other gods. Yet, you allowed this disaster. You allowed this suffering to come to us. And I want to tell you there are people who have suffered. Because of COVID-19. Na COVID-19 haijakuja kwa sababu ya dhabi yako. Haijakuja kwa sababu umekosa. Imekuja kwa sababu ya something that is called the unfairness of life. 
COVID ikaingia na ukapoteza kazi. Biashara ikaanguka. Makanisa yakafungwa. Mambo ikakaa ni kama imesimama. And people are suffering the effects of these things in a very great way. Tukaona familia hata zikivujika. Effects of the unfairness and in the, the inequalities of life. Tunaona mataifa ulimwenguni sasa. The nations of the world. Wanaona wale mataifa matajiri wamejinyakulia, you know, even the testing kits for their own people. Hata wameanza kulipa vaccines for their own people. Kwa sababu wao wako na financial muscles, uwezo wa kifedha. Na wale mataifa maskini kama Kenya wanatazamia huruma za World Health Organization and they are looking up to other donors who are rich. So these people wakawachwa hawana msaada and they were wondering what has happened. And I want to tell you mambo yanaweza badilika hivi. Na unajiuliza kwa nini mambo hayedi vizuri? Ukiangalia unatoaga tithe yako. Ukiangalia maombi hukosi. Ukiangalia hujaaguka kwenye dhambi, hujarudi nyuma, lakini things are not working out well for you. Your present is distressing. I'm speaking to you tonight. This is not the first time people have experienced this. We have testimony in the scriptures. Ya watu ambao walikuwa wakamilifu, watu ambao hawakuinamia miungu ya kigeni, watu ambao hawakuanguka kwenye dhambi, lakini all of a sudden because of the unfairness of life, they found themselves suffering. And labda uko hapa usiku wa leo. You are like this people ambao wanamwambia Mungu you have made us a reproach to our neighbors yani umefanya majirani watuchukie uko hapa na labda kwa jamii yenu umechukiwa unaona watu hawata ukipiga simu hawachukui kwa sababu wanajuanga wewe ni msoto kila saa na labda unapiga kukopa are you here can you say amen amen oh uko we will pray for you <laughs> praise the name of the lord it's true that even your own relatives can you know can desert you kwa sababu wanaona mambo yako hayedi vizuri your present is not good it is distressing so how watu wanamwambia Mungu you have made us a byword among the nations yani watu wanatuona wanatikiza vichwa wanashitwa nini baya na huyu have you ever heard watu wakiuliza nini by the way nini nasubuaga huyu have you ever had people wakiuliza hivyo? Shida ya huyu inakuanga nini? Kwa sababu wanakuangalia wanashindwa. Why are things not working out for you? Ulizaliwa mahali pazuri, umlisoma masomo mazuri, hata ulimaliza university, hujawahi pata kazi, labda biashara haikuedai vizuri na wanashindwa what is wrong with you? The Lord is speaking to you tonight. You are not the first one to experience that. You are not the only one who is suffering a distressing present. But you have to do something about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Na nimewambia, sometimes heavens can be like closed. Unaoba na unasikia maobi ni kama inagonga siringi nafanya nini? Wakati wa COVID, I was telling wachungaji ya kwamba, what is Jesus saying? Nikuwa na wauliza, munasikia kama mungu anasema nini? Because it sounded so quiet. Watu wanajaribu kutafuta sababu. Mungu wameachiria ugojwa kwa nini? Huyu wanapeana hii sababu. Huyu wanapeana hii. But all of them, according to our thinking. The heavens were like quiet. And people have suffered because the heavens were quiet. Bingu zikinyamaza kukuhusu wewe. Kuna haribika sana. Jina la Bwana lipewe sifa. And I pray that the heavens will not be quiet about us. That is why we are here to call the heavens to attention and to remind the heavens we are here. We have not changed our position. You are the God who was with our fathers. You are God today. You remain God forever. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot ignore us. The Lord must be aware of where you are and what you are going through. When your present is distressing you, what do you do? Wengi wetu tumeona hata watu wanajitoa uhai. Ati kwa sababu the present is so distressing. 
wanataka kujinyonga jinyonge nitapata nita gari nije nikuzike shauri yako wewe umeshindwa na kujua jia hatukubeberezi you need to know when the present is distressing you what are you supposed to do what steps do you take praise the name of the lord hebu niulizie jirani unasikia vile mchungaji anasema najua kuna watu wanakuangalia tu hivi lakini mawazo yao ni kama iko tu kwa shida zao we are not talking about your problems we are talking about what we are supposed to do to get a solution praise the name of the lord so these people when they saw that their present was distressing in verses 23 to 26 they tell us what they did huyu muandishi wa zaburi anasema in verses 23 to 26 they turned to god in prayer and they cried to god he makes a prayer and he says awake lord biblia yako inasema nini verses 23 Can you read I want to hear you? What is your Bible saying? Awake oh Lord. Yaani wewe una jukumu la kumwamsha Mungu. Ukiona ni kama Mungu hasikii maombi yako. It is your responsibility to call upon him and tell him awake oh Lord. Hey, mnataka kuniuliza Proverbs kwani Mungu analalanga. You know President Museveni na asinisikie. <laughs> wakati alipofuga nchi yake na akaona kuna waiganda kadhaa kadhaa hawasiki the lockdown rules aliwaambia <laughs> a very funny statement aliwaambia ya kwamba Mungu hana biashara ya kushughulikia nini alisema nini mtu gani tulikuwa tunacheka na wewe god has the whole world to look at he doesn't care about a few idolaters ambao hawasiki vile wanaabiwa praise the name of the lord Yaani Mungu ana billions za watu kuangalia. Ana billions za watu zinamlilia. Ukinyamaza wewe, bingu itakunyamazia. You have to take a step and awaken the heavens and tell the Lord, awake O Lord. I am tired of my present situation which is troubling me. Eh, mnanisikia jameni. That is why we call we call God on pr- to prayer or we call on him in prayer. These people ama huyu muandishi wa Zaburi he turned to God and prayed against divine inaction and forgetfulness. Anamwambia hivi verses 23 hebu tusome hata tulikuwa tunasoma. Awake Lord, why do you sleep? Yaani anauliza Mungu unawezaje lala kunihusu wewe? Why do you sleep? How many are here and they feel like God is, a, is asleep concerning them? I was sharing a testimony with my wife as we were coming on the road and I was sharing it like saying, God, are you asleep on this matter? Why is it not working out for me? Why is it this delay? Na labda uko hapa na umekuwa ukisikia ni kama Mungu amelala kukuhusu. Anauliza, why are you asleep? Rouse yourself, jinue. Do not reject us forever. Huwezi kuniacha milele. Why do you hide your face? Kwa nini unaficha uso wako Mungu? This must be a very bold person. Unajua wewe unaobaga ni kama unaogopa Mungu. Mungu, tafadhali, eh, unihurumie. Eh, kwa neema tu yako. Unisaidie nivuke hapa. Pray bold prayers. The scripture says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Hawaogopi wanapoenda mbele za Mungu. They approach the throne of God with boldness. They tell the Lord, please awake, rouse yourself. Why are you silent on us? Say something, Lord. And God is calling us to make such prayers tonight. Mungu anatuita tuweze kufanya maombi aina ile. Prayers that are filled with faith and boldness and courage. Praise the name of the Lord. So he tells God, Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and oppression? Kwa nini Mungu umesahau shida hizi zangu? Kwa nini Mungu umesahau matatizo haya yangu? Wewe badala ya kumwambia Mungu unakibiria jirani, unakibiria dugu yako, unakibiria watu, na wanaanza kuhepa simu zako, wanaanza kuhema appointment zako kwa sababu wanajua hawawezi kukusaidia. 
wewe hujatabua mahali msaada wako ulipo stop following people and start calling on the heavens muuliza Mungu bwana umelala jina la bwana lipewe sifa jina la bwana lipewe sifa haya maombi hayaombi na mtu ambaye hajachoka na kile ambacho anapitia lazima uchoshwe na ile hali unapitia lazima uchoshwe na oppression na suffering zile unapitia lazima usikie moyo wako umechoka and you have the faith and the boldness to approach god and tell him arise oh god awake kama umelala amka jina la bwana lipewe sifa i know the bible tells us that the lord does not slumber nor sleep but in prayer in boldness we call on him and we ask him why do you hide your face Why are you forgetting my misery and my oppression? We are brought down to the dust. Yaani tumeangushwa hadi mavumbini. Our bodies are clinging to the ground. Rise up oh God and help us. Praise the name of the Lord. I love this prayer. Yaani maombi ya kumwambia Mungu lazima ufanye nini? Amuka na utushahidie. And these are the prayers we need as a nation. These are the prayers we need as families. These are the prayers you need as an individual. Wacha kuomba tu maombi ya hohe hae. Maombi ya mtu ambaye hana imani, hana ujasiri wa imani. Mtu ambaye hajui maandiko. Wacha kutumana maombi. Pray for yourself boldly. Call on the heavens boldly. Rafu anasema, rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Tukomboe kwa sababu ya upendo wako usio na mwisho. We are about to pray. In fact, we have 10 minutes to pray. And I want you to pray for four things tonight. Nimemaliza kuhubiri. I cannot say it further than that. I want you to give I want to give you four prayer points. Uziombe leo na uziombe kesho. Ukimwambia Mungu based on Psalm 44 you must awaken from your sleep. Lazima unikumbuke you cannot reject me forever. You cannot ignore my problems forever God. I need you to awake and deliver me. How many are ready to pray? Oh, this is not easy for the faint hearted. Number one, we are praying for divine grace to give us victories over our enemies. Huyu Mungu tu divine God. Yeye ndiye anaweza kukupatia ushindi, kuudhidi ya maadui wale ambao unawaona maishani mwako. Those enemies ambao wamefanya uishi maisha ya hohe hae. Ambao unawaona ni kama wamekufukuza. The, the, the psalmist is saying, wewe ndiye unatupatia uwezo to push back our enemies. Tunajua Mungu hajalara, we only need to call on him. So we need, need divine grace to give us victories over our enemies. Umeandika hiyo. Number two, we are also praying for grace. Grace to help us depend on God and not human ability. Umejaribu kujisaidia muda mrefu umeshidwa. Now tonight we are saying God grant us the grace to depend wholly on you. Tumefuata dugu zetu na dada zetu hawa tusaidi. Tumejaribu watu tuliojua ni, ni wanasiasa na wenye mali hawajatusaidia. We need grace to depend on God in our present situation and not to depend on our human ability. Umeandika hiyo jameni? Quickly number three. We are also praying for God's grace to protect us from the unfairness and the inequity of life, inequity of life. Yeah.